So my name is uh, Bart Lewis. I'm a clinical geneticist uh, working at the Antwerp University and University Hospital of Antwerp. So about uh, 10 years ago, uh, I was uh, invited to go and work with uh, Dr. Dietz in Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. And uh, around the time that um, I arrived, uh, Dr. Dietz had started to see some patients that uh, looked like Marfan patients but weren't really fitting into the clinical diagnostic criteria that were developed at that time. And upon seeing those patients, we noticed that there was a certain pattern that came back over and over again. And that there was uh, mainly three clinical characteristics that distinguished uh, this new group of patients from uh, patients with Marfan syndrome. And these uh, new findings included uh, widely spaced eyes or hypertelorism, um, the presence of a cleft palate or a bifid uvula, and you should consider a bifid uvula as a kind of minimal uh, cleft palate. And then, um, most importantly, um, cardiovascular disease that was more severe um, than uh, what we've seen in Marfan syndrome. It was more severe because the patients had aortic dissections at younger age, at uh, smaller diameters than what we usually see in Marfan syndrome. And also, uh, the vascular disease was extending beyond the aortic root. So the root is the spot right at the site where the aorta leaves the heart, where we usually see aneurysms in Marfan syndrome. But in patients with this new condition, um, we found aneurysms throughout the aorta and also affecting the side branches coming off the aorta. So Dr. Dietz challenged me to find uh, the, the gene that uh, was underlying this condition and we started looking into the literature and found interesting mouse models that resembled the human condition and that was the basis to uh, look at uh, the Tija beta receptor genes as candidate genes for uh, this new condition. And indeed we were lucky because we found uh, mutations in the receptor coding for Tija beta receptor 2 and also subsequently in Tija beta receptor 1. So um, this was uh, fitting along with uh, prior observations that uh, Tija beta is really an important uh, molecule in the pathogenesis of aortic aneurysm. And um, since then we've gone on to find uh, new genes um, including Tija beta 2, Tija beta 3 and SMAT 3 that can also cause uh, Lewis Dietz uh, phenotypes. So I think it's really important to think about um, Lewis Dietz syndrome, um, especially in, in young patients that present with um, aortic aneurysms at uh, young age and, and dissections at small diameters. I think that's an important clue. But I think also in the physical exam, uh, we can look for findings that are unusual in classic Marfan syndrome. And these should include looking at the uvula to find bifid uvulas to look at the skull bones to see if there is craniosynostosis, to look at the face to see if there is hypertelorism or uh, widely spaced eyes. And um, we've learned now that there is quite a, a big spectrum uh, within Lewis Dietz syndrome. So other clues that can help is uh, skin findings um, uh, with uh, thin skin, uh, atrophic scars, um, easy bruising. If you see those in association with uh, skeletal findings, such as long bone overgrowth, uh, with uh, pectus deformities, scoliosis, club feet, these are all important clinical features that could ring a bell and, and, and raise the suspicion for uh, Lewis Dietz syndrome.